If I was to tell you that the world's population was going up and down at the same time, you'd probably think I was going crazy. But please, give me a moment to explain. I promise it will all make sense. In 2010, billionaire Bill Gates made some comments in a TED talk regarding methods to reduce carbon emissions to zero. One of the things he mentioned was the levels of population growth. He said, the world has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, healthcare, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15%. Now, let's just put to one side for a moment the thought that Bill Gates wants to kill us all with vaccines. His overriding point was that there are far too many people on the planet with respects to our resources. So it's now 2024, 14 years since that famous speech, and there are now 7.8 billion people on the earth today, with projections suggesting that we will reach 9.7 billion by 2050. That's a lot of people in a very short period of time. Now those kinds of figures are going to be a major challenge for you, your children, and your grandchildren, because they will need to ensure adequate food, water supply, and access to healthcare and education. So can we all agree, population increase is bad. There's just one problem. There are many countries around the world experiencing massive population decrease. We need to investigate this further. But before we do, could I please ask that you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks very much. So how is population calculated? We have something called the replacement birth rate, also known as the replacement level fertility rate. This is the number each woman needs to have on average in order to replace the population and maintain its size over time. Now this rate is typically considered to be around two to one, as this number accounts for mortality rates and other factors that can affect population growth. When the birth rate at the replacement level is two to one, each generation replaces itself without shrinking or growing. This rate takes into account factors such as infant mortality, childlessness, and individuals who do not reach reproductive age. If the birth rate falls below replacement level, a population will eventually decline, leading to an aging population and potential workforce shortages. On the other hand, if the birth rate exceeds the replacement level, a population will grow, which can put pressure on resources and infrastructure. With that in mind, let's look at some countries where the population is dropping. China, the world's second most populous country. Over the past few decades, China implemented laws such as the one child policy to control population growth. While this policy has been relaxed in recent years, the effects are still evident today. China's fertility rate has dropped well below the replacement level and experts believe it could be as much as one to 16, leading to an aging population and an increasingly shrinking workforce. Japan's fertility rate stands at one to four children per woman, well below the replacement level. As a result, Japan's population is projected to decrease from its current 126 million to around 88 million by 2065, with nearly 40% of the population being over the age of 65. South Korea's total fertility rate has dropped to around one to one children per woman, which means by 2067, South Korea's population is expected to decrease by over 20%. Italy's fertility rate stands at about one to three children per woman. Estimates suggest a decrease from today, 60 million to around 50 million by 2050. Lastly, Russia's fertility rate is also below the replacement level at around one to six children per women. Russia's population is projected to decrease from its current 145 million to around 129 million by 2050. Now I want you for a moment to imagine that you live in any of those countries. How do you think it would affect you? There are less people to do the jobs that need to be done. Costs will go up. The population is getting older, so there'll be more pressures on the health service and a noticeable reduction in the number of children. Now, over the next few years, these countries will need to invest in policies 
that support work-life balance, childcare services, and healthcare, so families can help boost fertility rates and support a healthy population growth. Promoting immigration and integration policies that attract and retain skilled workers can also help offset the effects of a declining native population. So now let's look at the top five countries with the highest fertility rates. We'll begin with Niger, a country in West Africa that currently has the highest birth rate in the world with an average of over seven to one children born to each woman. Angola, Mali, Chad, and the Democratic Republic of Congo are just behind with a birth rate of six to one. Now, high birth rates sound good, but this can also present opportunities and challenges. On the one hand, a young population can drive economic growth and innovation, but on the other hand, it can also strain resources such as healthcare and education. Now, as more individuals inhabit the earth, the demand for food, water, energy and land increases exponentially. This in turn has led to environmental degradation, deforestation and the depletion of natural resources posing a significant threat to our planet's delicate ecosystem. It is crucial that we address the issues of population growth holistically, taking into account not only the numbers themselves, but also the underlying factors driving this trend. Furthermore, we must strive to create a world where every individual has the opportunity to thrive, regardless of their background or circumstances. Investing in education, healthcare, and infrastructure is key to ensuring that future generations have the tools they need to lead healthy, fulfilling lives. In conclusion, the current trend of world population numbers presents both challenges and opportunities for us to consider. It is a call to action for policymakers, businesses, communities, and individuals to come together and chart a course towards a more sustainable and harmonious future. Let us seize this moment as an opportunity to shape our world that is resilient, inclusive, and just for generations to come. By understanding and addressing factors that influence fertility rates, countries can strive to achieve a population balance that supports long-term sustainability and prosperity for all. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you very much.